That is one of the richest sluice mats I have ever seen. Non-stop gold all over the miner's moss. As gold miners, we take advantage of how heavy gold is to extract it from the river gravels and soil in a creek. More often than not, you'll see people using gold pans like this to do that. However, modern gold pans are a relatively new invention. Most of the world uses a pan that looks like this. This is the Batea pan. B-E-T-E-A, not potato. For over 4,000 years, people right across the globe have been using this conical shaped pan to extract gold from creeks. Let me show you why. A normal Western flat bottom pan can hold around three shovels of quarter inch classified material. Totally full, this can hold five. 40% more dirt per pan. Flat bottom pans rely on continuous stratification and then removal of light materials. Potato pans work on the same principle, except you don't have to separate those activities. They happen simultaneously. When you put material in a flat bottom pan, you're going to shake this pan side to side and it's going to stratify the material. That means the heavy sink to the bottom and the lights come to the top. You're gradually going to tip the pan forward and work that material into the front riffles and dip and lift it out of the water in the creek. As you do that, the light material washes off over the top of your safety riffles. Your hope is that because you've stratified the material, all the gold is sitting in those riffles and is not going to be touched by the water. However, that doesn't happen immediately. So as you dip and lift your pan, you remove light materials and expose the heavies near the bottom. And that means you have to stop and continuously reshake the heavies back down deeper. And it runs the risk of you removing too much light material and accidentally picking up some of your gold. Here's the gold we got out of our three shovels. Not too bad. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plus some micro pieces. Whereas with this pan, it all happens at the same time. Yeet. Oh no, 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 no. No. In the case of the potato pan, all of the stratification is done by centrifugal force. As the pan spins underneath the water, it's concentrating all the heavies right down the bottom in that point. And just like in the creek, the weight of the water, the weight of the heavies, and the centrifugal force keep all the gold pinned to the very bottom. So much so that in my testing and other people's testing using these pans, we have a 98% recovery rate, which is every bit as comparable as a normal flat bottom pan you'd see used in Western countries. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad. Collecting the gold in one of these pans is a lot easier. And just to reiterate how good these are, this is the dominant pan used worldwide. Traditionally, they are made out of wood, but we're seeing more and more made out of steel and plastic. Let's do some panning with the potato pan today. This is definitely the best bit. Getting that swirl and checking out the gold at the bottom of the pan. Oh yeah! Oh, that's a nice little pile of gold at the bottom. In the past when I've used this pan, people question just how much fine gold I blow out. And this is going to be a very good example of how well it catches it. Because I don't think there is anyone that could deny that that isn't super fine gold. I mean... Just look at how small that stuff is. Senior Sweatpants has found a great spot that he's been sluicing all morning. These are his sweatpants, and this is his sluice box. He's run two and a half 40 liter buckets, and he's got a nice little collection of gold there. Look at those inconvenient sparkles accumulating around the bolt. Don't drop it. I see you also like long threads. Yeah, I love long threads. Pockets and pockets of that black stuff we don't like to pan. Oh, 
Holy sh**, dude. Holy sh**. That's two buckets. What? Where did you sell your soul and how do I sign up? <laughs> That's nice. That's all through that. You're going to have a good day. That's what Gadzi's been digging, and he's given me generous permission to dig there. Ooh, and is there some gold? The first pan of this material I took was all loose gravel, and I didn't think I was going to get anything, and I got about 50 pieces. But now, I've also hit the false bottom. Thick, sticky clay the gold can't get through. That look good. Look at that. Hell yeah. That's why Gandhi's getting such good gold. There's like at least two specks in there. That is really good. Gadzi's pushing this through his loose box by the bucket. He's going to have a good day. I'm going to have a great day because I'm going to enjoy it. But gold wise, Gadzi's going to kill it. That's one bucket. One freaking bucket. What? <laughs> Where do you find these spots? Matthew. Every single pan I'm doing is looking pretty good. Three shovel pans, good 50 specks of gold. Might be able to afford like a steak at the end of the day. Better not say that too loudly or the mining syndicate will come after me. It's not cold. It's not cold at all. Did you know that there are some kind of mushrooms that if you eat them, it'll keep you full for the rest of your life? Man, there is so much gold in those riffles. Boy, you are going to have a real nice day. I hope so. No, you don't need to hope, man. It's already in your sluice. <laughs> oh, that's better. Way more black sand. I reckon we're going to be back on the pastry. Yep, that's better. Way more speckeroonies. There's at least more than one in there. So I'm gonna keep working in that spot, stay warm and hopefully get more than 0.1. Gadzi's sluice is starting to look delicious. Look at that. There's like a whole pocket of flakes just there. You sir are definitely eating steak tonight. Mm. Have no fear, I am still finding gold in that spot. It's official, I'm a real gold miner cause I just found not one, but two. Two shotgun pellets and a bunch of gold. And you're only mining if you're digging up lead. Oh, these are not getting lighter. <laughs> Gadzi and I have been in the guts of a very nice pay streak for a while now. He's obviously moving a lot more volume than I am. Every pan is just littered with really nice gold. Every pan I do is this or better. That is a lot of specs. It's kind of hard to show you in one of the potato pans just how many you get. But we're talking like 50 plus pieces every single pan. Senior Sweatpants over here is probably pushing through a couple thousand pieces per bucket. Yeah. 
There is a very definitive rich streak of gold running through the middle of our workings. Either side of it still has great gold, but when you hit the really narrow pay streak, it gets fantastic. And this is what I'm pulling out in every single pan. This has to be one of the better pans that I've ever got in the Batea. That is ridiculous. Ooh, yeah. I know I've had a good day, but that dude over there, he gonna be rich. Good sir, I wanna see your gold. That sluice mat is chock full of bloody gold. <laughs> Look at it all. That's illegal, Gadzi. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the richest sluice mats I have ever seen. <laughs> Holy crap. How many ounces, Gadzi? A million. It's hard to express just how much work that is going to be to separate the gold from the black sands. I'll get Gazzy to send me a photo so we can show you later in a wait. But for now, we have a sneak peek. That's all through it. There is so much gold in that pan. Once again, that is nowhere near all of it. That is just a little bit that we're able to separate from all that black sand. That gold runs through every single part of this black sand right now. Now that we're home, three inch custom cleanup sluice, speed controller, 18 amp hour battery, 800 gallon an hour pump, and a tiny shovel. That's looking pretty good for just half a dozen pans. It took Gadzi a couple of hours of hand panning to reveal just over two grams of gold he got out of doing five 40 liter buckets. His biggest ever one day gold take. And this is the gold I recovered using the Batea pan designed over 4,000 years ago. I don't think that's two grams, but maybe a gram? I'm hoping for a gram of gold. That'd be a fantastic day using a gold pan. Not bad, that's pretty close, 0.95. One gram of gold is worth around 85 Australian dollars at the time of recording. Pretty good, considering I was using 4,000 year old gold prospecting technology. Until next time, please give your dog a big stress beyond the ears for me. Peace, I'm out.